Welcome to Lecture 5 of Bluff Body Aerodynamics. Today we're going to learn how to reduce vehicle drag. So we've looked at sort of basic principles of fluid mechanics, we've learned how to do CFP in order to make assessments, and we learned some basic uh, high level ideas of how uh, four round buff bodies occurs and, and generates drag. And today we're going to get to the specifics of vehicle design for drag reduction. So we're going to examine all the aspects of the basic vehicle shape which can be modified to alter the drag. Due to a lack of time, we're not going to cover add-on parts. Um, you can read about that in the textbook if you're interested. We'll also briefly discuss interference effects and how they affect the design of those add-on parts, um, even though we won't get into the details of the add-on parts themselves. Um, and even though in the text there's some discussion of other forces and moments, we're going to focus almost exclusively on drag to keep the scope manageable. So the key takeaway messages from today's lecture are that sometimes very minor changes to vehicle shape can significantly alter the drag. We need to be mindful of some changes. Sometimes reducing the drag coefficient increases the drag force if the frontal area rises. And the interference effects between parts guides the design of the add-on components. The approach we're going to take is we're going to move from the front to the rear of the vehicle. We're going to cover everything shown essentially on this slide um, with the exception of the couple of things that are uh, covered with the red boxes which are, are material that we're not going to get into. Um, so we're going to look uh, at starting from the front end moving along sort of the surface and sides of the vehicle towards the back. So beginning with the front of the vehicle uh, the front of the vehicle is rounded and or inclined, and this is done to avoid separations. We basically add radii to the top, the bottom, and the side corners um, of the front end of the vehicle to ensure that the flow always stays attached as it moves around. And if we incline the front, sort of the, where the radiator inlet would be, um, as well as the hood, this helps gradually guide the flow over the car. Um, but now in recent... Um, car designs, um, there are also pedestrian protection requirements which require sort of relatively curvy surfaces on the front end so that there's nothing sharp. Um, and so it turns out that typically those requirements are already sort of more than the minimum needed for aerodynamic purposes. So we don't usually actually need to worry about this too much from an aerodynamic perspective uh, anymore. So the way that this works though, if we were considering it aerodynamically, is that basically the corner, adding that those corner radii um, at the front end of a, of a bluff body is going to reduce the drag up to a point. Initially we get a very strong drop in drag coefficient, uh, as you can see from these plots. Um, but then as we move to, to sort of large radii relative to the thickness of the object, um, essentially the drag coefficient becomes constant. The reason for this is that once the radius is large enough that the flow is able to stay fully attached going around the corner, there's no real benefit to making the radius any larger. It can also be the case that very small changes in the geometry can have pretty noticeable impacts. So if we start with uh, the top left picture here, and this is sort of car model number one. Um, and uh, then and two is sort of a small reduction. Uh, so one is sort of shown in the, the white uh, background with the solid line, and then the hatch is the additional designs. So the design two just sort of gets rid of some of that overhang at the front. Uh, design three pulls the whole thing back. Design four angles it downward. Uh, design five sort of pulls it uh, back further than three. Um, six kind of does a combination of sort of five and four. Um, and then seven kind of puts all of it together. And what we see looking at the effect of this on drag coefficient is that we can get, you know, even just going something like this, getting rid of this little tiny corner radius reduces the entire vehicle's drag coefficient by 6%. That's pretty incredible for something that's such a small shape change. And when we get to changes like three, four, and five, um, 
which, you know, if I look at three, and especially say five, this is still a pretty minor change compared to the baseline one, that's a 10% drag reduction. And if we go a little further, uh, either six or seven, either of these, it's a 14% drag reduction. So these are pretty, we can get pretty significant drag reductions for pretty minor changes in geometry if we do it right. And in fact, um, you might, a, a useful question to ask is, well, how, how good could we do, right? If we didn't have to worry about anything practical and we could make an idealized front end of the vehicle, what could we do, um, how good could we do in terms of lowering the drag? Um, and then how close can we get to that with practical solutions? So this was done experimentally and um, M1 is the design uh, that shows essentially the rounded front end and K1 shows sort of the, the side view of the, the rounded uh, front end. So this is sort of the vertical view and the side view, um, top and bottom here. And then some alternative designs, um, M0 was the sort of default uh, vehicle design, so M1 is the uh, ideally rounded and the same thing with the Ks. And then a uh, small just addition of this corner radius here in M2, and then a little bit bigger corner radius M3, similar for, for the Ks. And what we see is that if we go to M1 plus K1, we're able to reduce the vehicle drag coefficient by 0 0.05. Vehicle drag coefficients are usually around, you know, this looks like an older vehicle, so maybe 0 0.4, 0 0.5. Um, so it's around 10% reduction by adding this sort of curvy front end. Um, and if uh, I have just one or the other, actually. Um, I, I get uh, much less than half of the effect. Um, so that's, what's, that's interesting, is that uh, when you add K1 plus M1, you get much more than the, the sum of the parts. And then if we go to M2 and K2, those tiny changes, yeah, that gives us a little bit of benefit. Um, but what's interesting is if we go to M3 plus K3, um, where we still haven't really changed the geometry relative to M0 and K0 very much, um, we're able to recover about 90% of the drag reduction that we could with the ideal front end. And that was just sort of a few things that were tried. It turns out you can actually get back to that ideal shape change, uh, shape drag uh, if you optimize the geometry. So here's again a baseline shape and here's that sort of op, uh, ideal geometry which is called form B here um, and this reduces drag by 9% and through uh, a variety of different optimizations eventually you can see that a shape can be obtained in which the uh, you know not, nothing nearly as extreme as this large curvy surface being filled in is needed to achieve exactly the same drag reduction. The next thing we'll look at is the front bumper sweep. And it turns out this has an optimal value. Right, so the, what we're going to define this as this delta x quantity, which is essentially how far forward the, the corner of the bumper is. So delta x small means that it's sort of right in front of the, the front wheel, and delta x large means it's sort of tending towards a squarish front end. So what we see when we look at the uh, effective drag coefficient versus this delta x, is that at very small values we get relatively high drag, and then a drop at sort of medium values, and then it starts rising again as we go to very large values. So why do you think that this is happening? Why does the drag increase at both extreme ends of this curve? This is something I want you to take a couple minutes and think about before you move on to the next part of the video.